movie production we don't count our eggs before they hatch you shoot and produce a movie because it's something you love to do not because you are so high on making money off it that way if the film doesn't get the needed attention it even deserves it wouldn't come to haunt your willingness to shoot again even if once you already shot failed miserably your success rate is only 40 percent after the whole production is done the rest is left to the public's judgment when released you can't control the public sucking those negative judgments learn more from people ahead of you gain more experience and always make sure what you are doing now is better than the previous works you did more effort today i'll be talking about some of the challenges the no time to die crew encountered and also do a little bit behind the scenes without wasting no time let's die so that was all planned out ahead of time and rehearsed I'm not sure if we had like a six, seven cameras on that scene and also a drone to shoot it. James, why? Why would I betray you? We all have our secrets. We just didn't get to yours yet. Classic James Bond movies are among the few movies you would watch with lots of live action and less CGI. What you see the cars doing, they're genuinely doing that. They're genuinely driving down steep, rocky hillsides across rivers. And they're surviving. It's unbelievable very risky stunts and to top it all a huge budget 1483 vfx shots were recorded in this movie from cinesite ilm dneg and frame store but the practicality bit still remains unbeaten wait who fights in a dress like this aren't her boobs going to come out well it's just a movie right i'm not sure anybody in real life would ever fight in a dress like this i mean what if your clothes get ripped off by your opponent and then you get naked how are you going to fight naked <laughs> soon you would be known as the naked fighter both green screens and led stages were used in this movie but recently the led is becoming more attractive and less time consuming compared to the green and blue screen which brings lots of vfx works to the bench Two point eight millimeter pitch LED panels are connected, making a two hundred and seventy degree twenty foot radius cylinder surrounding the character and the ceiling with LEDs as well. It's called an LED stage or LED virtual production. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of the LED virtual production, it's a combination of technologies which lets filmmakers replace their green screen with walls made up of LED panels. Imagine stepping onto a film set that lets you capture a golden hour which lasts the entire day. You can also change the weather, move photos with real backgrounds such as mountains, see a blockbuster quality VFX creature, interact with actors, or scout for a location around the world, or without leaving the room. It's costly though, but it's cheaper compared to using green screen and paying lots of artists to work on 3D and compositing. Let's check out some of the great money moments in this movie. Get out and you still have a smile on your face. I've never seen four befores jumping so high in the air. Up a river, through a river, flipping over. It was a real high speed off road chase and looked fantastic. This isn't CGI. This is simply practical. All the stunt are for real. There's nothing that's CGI. Each one of those cars cost somewhere 71,000 USD. Okay, it's not that expensive looking at the budget for this movie. The sad part is after the movie, the cars will be repaired and shipped to Africa at its original price tag. I now understand why Trump called Africa the dustbin of the world dust being of the world what he meant was this is where the world take their dump why are we having all these people from shithole countries come here referring to african countries he's a nasty man he's nasty i lost count of how many cars they ruined in this movie but it was a lot cameras used were the 35 to 65 millimeter movie cameras three different Ariflex cameras 
they also had two different IMAX cameras and two different Panavision cameras. But the most used amongst them all was Panavision Panaflex System 65 Studio. And the reason they shot on these cameras were mainly because of the rich colors they produced. Just to be able to shoot that much with those cameras was pretty amazing. These directors do too much sometimes because these cameras record on tapes. And for this movie in particular, they had to record 1007 rolls of 35 millimeters and more than 1.7 meters of 35 millimeters and 65 millimeters in total. I have not tried an IMAX film camera before, but we are made to believe they have something unique no digital camera has. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting. I can't think of any unique feature other than the resolution. And so the reason for IMAX in this film has to do with opening up the peripheral viewing for the audience and to be even more engulfed in, in the scenes, you know. That was really the intention to maximize the experience um, for the audience, really. After I read the struggle they went through to get this movie finalized, the first thing I said to myself was, okay, I got it now. That's why the plot came out so crappy with a messed up storyline and this is how no offense, but most Africans and Indies upcoming filmmakers shoot their movies. Let me explain. This was one messed up situation and I pray no director working on a low budget film should ever encounter. I had to talk about this because I know somebody watching will take a clue and not repeat these. Before I continue, I would like to quote some of the situations leading to this mess. Originally, Danny Doyle was supposed to direct the 25th installment and while in pre-production, he was replaced with Cory Joji Fukunaga and an entirely new script. The 007 stage at Pinewood Studios in England accidentally got blown up by a controlled explosion. Bond star Daniel Craig suffered an onset injury and the April 2020 release was delayed to October 2021 because of the impact of the pandemic. Also. At some point, Fukunaga got attacked by malaria and also lost his camera operator to an injury on a different movie set. A stage they had targeted to shoot some of the scenes had also been booked by some other groups of people. There was no additional time added to the pre-production schedule despite the directorial changeover. We started all over from page 1, Fukunaga elaborates. On the other hand, writing had to take place all the way through production. All they knew was how to start the movie and how to end the movie, but in between had to be shot whilst they were writing the script on set. So they took a decision to be editing the movie whilst dudes were on location still shooting some of the errors they were encountering at post. You see, as a filmmaker, reading other people's production challenges teaches you a lot. $250 million was the production cost. Movie promotion cost 100 million and also tens of millions were spent to keep postponing the movie because of all the challenges I just mentioned. It's still not easy trying to fake certain mistakes with money because whilst watching the movie I knew there was something wrong personally. I thought the movie was moving too fast, the antagonist was one slow dude who wasn't much of a threat with the whole plot making no sense. What really did it for me most were the locations they chose which really spoke well about the movie. The picture quality, stunts and cinematography, those were on point, but the storyline, hmm, meh. I would encourage every up and coming filmmaker to do proper planning and make accounts for everything before um, you begin to shoot. There might be some insects here and there that would have to be accounted for, but it wouldn't get worse as not writing down anything and budgeting for them. You get a lot of indie and African movie producers directing, checking sound with no script and he's going to be the same person to edit the whole film. The most messed up part is sometimes they even play the main character. Dude, like what's, what's wrong with you guys? And after they drop the film, it doesn't get anywhere. Not even a chicken wants to watch it. And to top it all, they complain of not having support. If a 50 million, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 million dollar movie can fail, then you should know that as much as money plays a vital role in movie production, the skill set and planning is way ahead and shouldn't be ignored. A like and a sub would really help the algorithm push my videos. See you in my next video.